Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara. And just to address the elephant in the room, yes, I did get a haircut literally like, <laughs> like an hour ago, I just got back. I have a lot of stuff going on this week and nothing is going the way that it is supposed to, but I've got one more big visual change that you'll probably see the next time that I film, but maybe not, who knows? Everything's kind of up in the air right now. <sighs> Just need to get through this week, you know? It's one of those weeks. But I'm actually very excited about today's video. I was kind of dreading filming this week, which I mean, sometimes happens, it doesn't happen all that much. It's not that I dread filming, it's more like the prep for filming. Some videos take hours and hours to prep for and I just knew I didn't have the like mental space or time this week. But when I realized that I haven't yet done a no buy update, this year I was like okay this is actually this is going to be fun I'm looking forward to filming this video and I had fun you know planning out what I was going to say and doing the scripting and all of that I guess just thinking about makeup in a more like bird's eye view perspective and thinking about my collection my relationship to makeup put me in a good mood <laughs> which is what I need right now and hopefully this can boost your mood as well so let's just get into it let's talk about my low buy how things are going, my relationship to makeup and my collection. I'm gonna talk through, you know, what my low buy, no buy status is like right now, if I brought any new products into my collection. I think last year I was doing these videos once a quarter. So every three or four months I would basically do an update. But this year I feel like I've settled into like a, a groove and I'm much more happy being in that low buy space. Last year, I think I was still kind of like, oh, I think I'm on a no buy. I don't know if I should move to a low buy, but I'm more comfortable now. So I'm probably just gonna have two of these videos this year rather than four. There have been some changes, but they've mostly been positive changes. So let's just talk about it. Do you guys like my hair? I'm not sure. This is more layers than I've ever had. And it's not really what I was looking for. I went to a new hair salon so you never really know what to expect my friend recommended this place and i just wanted like i wanted it shorter around the face and then layers but i didn't want like layers all around the head i didn't want quite this many layers or this much volume i feel like this part of my hair feels so thin right now because it's all chopped throughout here so let me know if you like if you like it i'm sure i'll go into it my hair grows pretty quickly but Let's talk about other new things. Let's talk about the new products that I brought into my collection lately. I do have quite a few new things, to be honest. I did get three products at the very end of last year. So I'm not gonna talk about those because I think I included them in my like year roundup. It was one lip liner and two eyeliners. But so far this year, I have bought some things firsthand. I have got some things secondhand, but I'm just gonna go in like recency, recent? order what's most recent however you say that i did place an order to ColourPop lately and i got some hair things which again you'll see that change in my next video but I'm, I'm just talking about makeup today so this is the cream gel eyeliner as you can see i have not opened it yet i have this one eyeliner it's not the same color at all but i have one eyeliner that is almost done so i'm kind of hoping to finish that first before i open this one but the packaging is super cute this is a red eyeliner which is something i have been interested in for a while i was considering getting the charlotte tilbury one which is a bit more like burgundy back during the Sephora sale, but <laughs> if you saw my video a few months back, I did an eyeliner declutter because I have far too many eyeliners. And what was the point of doing that big declutter if I'm just going to bring new things in? And as I mentioned, I have brought some new eyeliners in, so that's not great, but this is a color that I don't already have. So this is an entirely different category. And I do sometimes do red liner with just like a red eyeshadow or a burgundy eyeshadow. So I know that I will get lots of use out of this, especially because I have this green eyeliner in my inner corner that I wasn't even sure if I would get that much use out of it. It was a present and I love it. I use it a ton. So this color is something I will use even more. So yeah, it's just like a dark red color. It does have a little bit of shimmer, which I kind of would prefer that it's matte, but the color is great. So I'm happy with that, excited to use it. I will for sure be wearing this in a video soon. 
So that is the one ColourPop product that I got in terms of makeup. This is Be My BB. That's the shade. I am also doing a reel showing all the new ColourPop products. I got a little ColourPop haul. So you'll see that at some point as well. The next thing is this large bag. Well, actually not so large anymore. My friend Steph, who was like one of the first people I knew who was into makeup back in high school. She, I don't think she likes makeup as much as I do now. So we've kind of flipped, but she decluttered a ton of stuff to me. Most of it I've actually already decluttered. So the next time I do an empties and declutter video, I will show the ones that I have chosen to already get rid of. These ones, I'm not sure about. So I might declutter some more, but there are some things that I'm for sure gonna keep. This is what I'm wearing today actually on my lips. This is the Annabelle Lip Liner. At first when I saw it, I thought it was gonna be too pinky for me, but combine this with a nude lip or even like a light red shade and I actually really like it. So this is my favorite thing so far. The rest of these are all lip products. She did declutter some eyeshadow palettes to me, but they weren't for me, so I decluttered them. Again, I did a reel on all these products, so if you wanna see them individually, you can check there. I'm just not sure how many of these I'll be keeping. These two are exactly the same. These are from Mary Kay. They are in the shade Berry. I don't really wear dark lips, and these are pretty much all dark. These are two NYX lip liners. These are both dark shades as well, but I do love NYX lip liners, so I might keep these ones. And then we've got a couple of lip glosses. I'm not big on lip gloss, as you know. This is from Aether Beauty though, and I've actually never tried any of the Aether products, so I'm kind of curious about this one. I know they're closing. I'm so sad they're going out of business because they are one of those companies that is like actually doing great work, like very eco-friendly, very sustainable. And I was thinking, oh, since they're closing, they're probably having a big sale. I'll check on the website. This has nothing to do with any of this, but just thought I would mention it. I'll check on the website, see if there's anything I wanna buy. There was nothing I was interested in. It was all like lip glosses or eyeshadow palettes that are not the kind of shades I like. So it was kind of sad to be like, oh, I guess I'm never gonna get to try them, but I'll try this one. And then we've got a KVD lipstick, very dark again. So not sure about keeping that one. And then I've got this lip primer, which is basically just a lip balm. So. It's a lot of new lip stuff. I also did a lip product declutter recently and I have a whole lip product project pan going on right now, a series. I will link that here because I have too many lip products. So Steph decluttering all of these lip products to me was really not ideal, but at the same time, I couldn't say no to all of them. I did declutter a bunch of them, but these are the things that I haven't decided about yet. So I do want to mention these you will see them in some capacity in a future video. We'll see how many of them I decide to keep. Most of these are like unused or used once. So those are all secondhand. I've got one more secondhand thing and this is probably my favorite product that I've got so far this year. This is from Glossier. It is the Cloud Paint in Spark and this actually started me on this phase of love with cream blushes that I am currently in. So I actually got this from the app Carrot. I kept getting ads for it on Instagram. You guys know how I love Buns, the app, which is a trading platform. I found Carrot useful, but not that great. It's kind of just like Facebook Marketplace. But anyway, someone posted this brand new cloud paint, like it still had the thing on it and everything. I think I've talked about this before, but I love it. I love the effect on my cheeks. I just needed a little bit of time to get used to it. I also love it on the lips, like a, a very, very small amount. I just sort of use like what's left over from when I'm applying the blush and I put that on my lips. It looks very, very bright. So you do need to be careful, not use too much or just accept that you're gonna have a super, super blushy day. But yes, I love this. Love, 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 really happy that I got that on Carrot. And then the very last couple things that I purchased this year was from the Sephora sale. I am nearly done my foundation and my concealer. I only have one foundation. Well, I mean, technically two, they're both almost done. And I have two concealers, but one of them I don't like, so I'm probably gonna declutter. The other one is almost done. So I got a new foundation and a new concealer. I have not opened them yet, but I probably will be 
by the end of June. That's sort of when I expect to have finished the other products. So I can't tell you how I like these yet. But those are all the new things that I brought into my collection as of late. The only like new purchases, first-hand purchases were these three which is good. I don't want to be buying that much makeup, you know, creating waste. I would rather bring in secondhand makeup, but at the same time, I don't wanna just be okay with bringing in limitless amounts of secondhand makeup because then I'm going to have far too big a collection. So that's why I'm still being very curatorial about the secondhand makeup that I bring into my collection, even if it is free, even if it's like from a friend and trustworthy, I just don't want my collection to grow. That is my ultimate goal. So now that we've gotten that over with, those are all of the new products that I brought into my collection so far in 2023. I also got these Peace Out Acne Spots from the Sephora sale. This is skincare, but just thought I'd mention it. I tried one one time and it didn't work. That was disappointing. And I actually haven't had any major breakouts since then, which is great, but I don't know if these work. And as you can tell, I'm very happy with all of these purchases. No regrets. I took a long time to think about all of these. As you can tell, even with the secondhand stuff I'm bringing in, I'm giving it a lot of thought before deciding if these things deserve a spot in my collection. And obviously with the Sephora sale, because I only bought a couple of things and I waited until the sale, there were things that I really needed, I really wanted. So I'm happy with my relationship to, you know, new things and with my overall low buy. You can tell it's not a no buy anymore and I've made my peace with that. I've accepted the fact that I will always be bringing new things into my collection in one way or another and that's okay i'm i'm okay with the rate at which i'm bringing new things in because i'm still constantly evaluating my collection constantly curating decluttering finishing older products off so i think i'm in a really good place right now with my makeup now that we've got that out of the way let's talk about some things that are changing lately so this is an update so you know i want to talk about updates <laughs> new things the first one as i mentioned about this blush and loving cream blush that is a big change i i don't know what's going on i used to like cream blush back in high school like i much preferred cream blush to powder blush and then basically since undergrad i have preferred powder blush and now somehow using this blush has made me fall back in love with cream blush i don't even have that many cream blushes because i declutter them because i don't like cream blush but now i do but i've just been using everything as cream blush inspired by this so i've got this little lip sample from kvd that i think i threw it into my project pan was like i just want to get this used up whether it's on my lips on my cheeks whatever i'm wearing it today i love it as a blush i've been using some of my lipsticks as a blush what else yeah i have one of my lipsticks in my project pan I've been using as a blush. It's like a red one and it's very similar to this. So I think I'm, stop it, <laughs> something falling. So I think I'm going to use that until it's done and then replace it with this because they are like virtually the same color. Maybe I'll swatch them to show you, but I might as well get that one out first because it is quite old. So I've just been loving using cream blush. I think it's because it's the summer and my skin acts differently outside than it does in the winter so I just find that cream blush looks more natural it sits better on the skin so that is a big change but that's not the only change I've had quite a few preferences changing recently maybe this is just getting to know my makeup style better maybe it's getting to know my products better or maybe it's honestly just you know just changing because that's Things are always gonna be this way. One year I'm gonna prefer powder, one year I'm gonna prefer cream, I don't know. But another preference is lighter eyebrows. For a long time, I loved dark eyebrows and I still do, but I think on myself personally, I prefer not quite as dark as I have been going. I saw a picture of me yesterday uh, from actually my master's graduation back in 2019 and that was like the peak of when I like dark brows I was dying my eyebrows very dark I was filling them in really intensely it was very like block brows circa you know 2016 I should probably in include a picture right here because it was 
so drastic. I don't really know why I thought it looked good at the time, but now looking back, it did not look good. And I was thinking about this because yesterday I used a different brow gel. I'd never used this before. So I finished the previous brow gel I was using, which was actually a mascara that was almost done. So it didn't really dispense that much product. So I tried a different mascara yesterday on my brows, which had a lot more product and therefore it made my brows look a lot darker. And I was just looking at myself like, this is not a good look. Like, why do I like this? So then today I used an actual brow gel, my Merit one, which is quite a bit lighter. I think it's just like the blonde shade and I think it looks so much better. So I might be overusing mascara as brow gel because I just don't think it looks as good. I want a lighter brow these days. This is a big change because for many years, just like the blush thing, I have much preferred dark brows with light hair, but you know, we'll see how long this lasts. The other things aren't as big of a change, so I'll just go through them quickly. But the powder that I'm currently using, the MAC one, I've realized that when I put it under my eyes, it looks so powdery, so cakey. Even if I just use a tiny bit, it's not a good look. So now I don't powder under my eyes. I powder basically everywhere on my face. Well, not, you know, here, but here, chin, nose, zone so forehead not under my eyes and I think some people only powder under their eyes but I think it looks better without powder so sorry but try that sometime try powdering everywhere on your face except for under your eyes you might like it yeah it's gonna crease like the concealer you put there but it's gonna crease anyways with powder okay have you found a powder that doesn't crease under your eyes no so give it a try man I have I have a lot of <laughs> a lot of preferences to talk about but maybe I'll ch I'll save it for another video or something because I have other things I need to be discussing. Maybe I should see it as more than a coincidence the fact that I'm noticing all of these preferences changing and the fact that the season is changing that I'm now sweating while I'm going outside and instead of trying to layer up. That might have something to do with it. <laughs> so maybe I should do an update. Maybe in the winter when I give a low buy update, I will also mention if my preferences are changing because there might be a reason there that has to do with the seasons. This is something that I learned recently from a Julia Adams video. I think she just like mentioned it in passing and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> how did I never think of that before? So with bronzer, I usually when I apply it, I do a little bit like around the chin because you know, you're like sculpting out your face, you do the cheekbones, you do a bit on the forehead, maybe a tiny bit on the bridge of the nose and then around the chin. But I always notice that it looked kind of awkward around my chin. And the reason is because I was applying it like here, like on sort of above the chin. And she mentioned that if you do that, you look like you have a chin strap or you look like you're darker, you have hair here. What you should do is do under the chin, along the chin to sort of sculpt it out, you know, make it look darker here. So since then I've been doing under the chin. Just a little pro tip, I'm sure you guys all know this, but somehow, you know, probably because I'm not a big fan of bronzer and so I've never used it that much, I just don't know that much about bronzer. Yeah, apply it under your chin rather than on your chin. Pro tip. I think I'm gonna save some of these for a hot takes video, my controversial opinions, because I think some people are going to disagree with some of these. But the last two things that I have preferred lately is, as I mentioned, basically only nude colors on the lips. I don't like a dark lip anymore. I still like red on the lips, but only certain occasions. Like I'm not saying special occasions, but I need to be in the right mood. I need to be able to reapply my lips throughout the evening. It needs to go with the outfit and the eye makeup as well. So for the most part, I will apply a nude type of lip liner and then a tiny bit of the, I mean, it looks red, but it shows up kind of pinky if you apply just a little bit, which is what I do, or I'll do like a nude or a very, very light pink lip. And that is like my go-to. And I never used to put on a lip product if I didn't have a whole eye makeup look, but I've actually been loving doing my lips if I don't do my eyes. Like I obviously will do mascara, but then I'll also apply a bit of lip liner and a bit of color. And somehow that makes me feel like put together. And I think it's kind of playing into like the clean girl aesthetic when they like don't put on eye makeup, but they do their lips. 
I don't know, but somehow for the spring and summer, that has been working for me. And it's also it takes less time. It's a bit lower maintenance. Okay, and the very last thing is what I've realized, not really a preference change, but what I've realized is I prefer a very light coverage foundation and then a medium concealer. And that way it's very customizable. If I just want to wear a tiny bit of concealer, I can do that. Or if I just want to wear a very light layer of foundation, if I'm, you know, maybe gonna be out and about, but don't feel like doing a full face of makeup, but I'm not feeling happy with my skin. Or if I just do a little bit of makeup in the morning, I'll just do a foundation and in the evening, if I need to ramp it up a bit, then I will add as much concealer as I need. I've just found that to be the most customizable way to do my base. And that is why I got these two products. This is more of a medium concealer, as I understand it. And this is a skin tint, so it's very light coverage. So, Again, that's probably well suited for the summer, but those are just a couple of the preferences that I have had as of late. And pretty much all of those mark a change with before. Like before, I much preferred a very thick, heavy coverage matte base. So if you remember my very full coverage, very matte Becca foundation, obviously back in the day, I preferred a very heavy coverage base and that has been changing over time but I think last year and earlier this year my preference was like a medium coverage foundation but now it's light coverage so again that could change in the winter but that is what I am enjoying right now so those are the main things that I wanted to cover in this video those are the big updates but I do also want to say in terms of my relationship to my collection I think I'm still making progress in terms of my relationship and how I feel about my products. You know, I mentioned in the past that I was full on a makeup hoarder and I'm still getting better about that. And I think one way that I can see that I'm really making progress is by the fact that I got these products months ago now, right? Like the Sephora sale was in April and it's now June and I haven't even opened them. I have been patiently waiting until I finish the other products that I have because that was the deal. I only got these in the sale because they were on sale. Like otherwise I would have waited until I had completely finished those products to get new ones. I never would have done this in the past. Old me would have started using a product as soon as I purchased it. Like I love that new factor. As soon as I got something, I would stop using whatever I had been using before. I was all about the new stuff. That's how I accumulated such a big collection by not finishing my older stuff, by just bringing new things in, never decluttering, never panning my products. So this is just a great example to prove to myself that I have made progress. Plus the fact that I didn't keep everything from Steph, right? Like I'm still, curating and yeah i just i wouldn't have i wouldn't have done that before so pat myself on the back i'm proud of me also the fact that i was already placing an order to ColourPop and i didn't purchase more than just that one makeup product i think it's a great sign of progress as well because i had already reached that shipping threshold so i could have just added more in justified more and never order from ColourPop, but i didn't i resisted and one more thing, I did intend to talk about this in the video, but I have only accepted PR from one brand before. I've only received three things from PR. I've gotten a couple of requests, but I've consistently said no. And I did get a couple of requests lately that actually were brands that were of interest to me. So far, I'm saying no for one reason or another. And again, like back in the day, if I were to think about undergrad me, someone offering me free makeup, obviously I would have automatically said yes, no questions asked. So progress. And if you all have any ways that you sort of measure how you're feeling and how your relationship with your stuff or, you know, just your general consumerism uh, and shopping inclinations, how that has changed and how you keep yourself in check, I would love to hear. Shauna did a video recently about sort of birthday spending and the treating yourself mentality, which can be negative just because like you could have budgeted for months and months and then just because it's your birthday or a special occasion, you're like, okay, well, now I can spend whatever I want, buy whatever I want, and I'm definitely not 
doing that for my birthday. I'm not planning to buy any new products, but again, I just got all of this new stuff. I feel like I have brought a bunch of new things into my collection already, so I don't feel the need to do that. But even if I didn't, I wouldn't treat my birthday like an occasion to spend money and, and go buy a bunch of stuff. And I think probably in the past, I would have done. So that is everything. I was also thinking about the fact that one more update is just regarding like my, I guess the average cost of products in my collection. Let me explain. In previous videos, I have talked about how I want to have a higher end collection. I'm trying to buy fewer drugstore items because I just feel like if things are cheaper, I don't have to put as much thought into it. And then I'm more likely to buy more or buy things on sale. So, I am still working towards that goal to, of having a higher end collection, but I don't know, like I haven't measured that in any capacity. Maybe I could do a video where I go through and I check like which of my products are drugstore and which are high end. I think that would be kind of interesting because I have no idea. I think in the past it was probably like 90% drugstore, 10% high end, or maybe, you know, 85 and 15 or something. And I think now it's probably closer to 60% drugstore, maybe 55% drugstore, and then the rest high end. I still think drugstore is the majority, but I don't know. Would you guys be interested in that? Because I'm interested <laughs> in finding that out about my own collection. That's not really an update because I can't tell you what the percentages are, but that's something that I have been thinking about lately. But that is all. <laughs> this has been quite a long video. So yeah, lots to update you on because this is my first update of the year. It is now halfway through the year, basically. So lots of new stuff that I brought in and lots of changes that I made, whether intentionally or unintentionally, but overall I'm happy with how things are going. So that is it. But before we wrap up, let's talk about a book that I have been reading lately. So this is Ace by Angela Chan, what asexuality reveals about desire, society, and the meaning of sex. I listen to this on audio as I do with many of the nonfiction books that I read. This was a great primer on sort of all things asexuality, a little bit of like the history of sex sexuality, very US focused. I'm not going to define asexuality because people who identify, identify in a variety of different ways. It's not sort of like a catch-all. Some people who are asexual are also aromantic. Some people are not, people fall everywhere on the gender and sexuality spectrum. But this was the first book that I've read about asexuality and I've actually never read a fiction book with an asexual character, I don't think. And there's very few also on screen, you know, on TV or in movies. And I think asexual people are like 1% of the population. So it's pretty large percentage. Hopefully we get some more representation soon, but this was just really interesting. Asexuality tells us a lot about sexuality as a whole and the way that society looks at sex and sexuality as a whole. So this is a great primer starting point for learning. And yeah, I would highly recommend it. It was pretty short. I think it was like seven to eight hour audiobook. I feel like I, ha I wrote down some good quotes. Yeah, it talks a lot about how asexual liberation will help sex be decommodified. The goal of ace liberation is simply the goal of true sexual and romantic freedom for everyone. So just in the way that feminism helps not just women, but also men, asexuality helps everyone at, at, at any part of the sexuality spectrum. I was familiar with compulsory heterosexuality before, but there's also compulsory sexuality, which I had not even considered, just sort of the assumption that everyone is interested in sex. So a couple of good quotations from the book. Ace liberation will help everyone. It comes in rejecting sexual and romantic normalcy in favor of a carefully considered sexual and romantic ethics. A society that is welcoming to aces can never be compatible with culture, with misogyny, racism, ableism, homophobia, and transphobia, with current hierarchies of romance and friendship, and with contractual notions of consent. It is a society that respects choice and highlights the pleasure that can be found everywhere in our lives. And most importantly, asexuality destabilizes the way people think about relationships, starting with the belief that passionate bonds must always have sex at the root. So we need to think more about all of our relationships, not just our romantic ones, not just our sexual ones, but also our friendships, our relationships with the people we love, our family members. Oh, and happy pride. <laughs> I didn't even mention that, but happy pride, everyone.
that is my video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. I hope you're having a good video. <laughs> I hope you're having a good week and that when I see you next, things will be less chaotic. I feel like I say that every video, but <laughs> truly. Bye.